Hello everyone and welcome to Respectful Dave. In today's video, I'm going to try to change the way you approach chess games with prophylaxis. What is prophylaxis? Prophylaxis is preventing what your opponent wants to do. So normally you're thinking, what should I play? What, which piece should I move? Or where should I checkmate? Stuff like that. You're always I, I, I. But the truth is that chess is a two-player game and you have to think from your opponent's perspective too. So we're going to take a look at this game uh, played by with the white pieces Karpov Anatoly, very famous I mean, former world champion, uh, Russian strong player against Gata Kamsky, which is another big legend from the chess game. Number 11 back in the back back in this game uh, in his prime, his, he was probably stronger than that. And they're playing, a, they're going to play a game. And I want you to notice how or I, don't, I want you to take a look at how Karpov always keeps things under control. Um, so the game opened with D4, Knight of 6, C4 g6 we're not going to concentrate on the opening too much c6 so normally c6 what meant some beginners just as a little note some beginners struggle to understand these kind of c6 moves um but the reality is that black wants to play d5 and doesn't want to take back with with a knight or with a with a big piece because then you would start losing tempos so c6 prepares d5 very simple c takes d5 c takes d5 now you get a symmetrical structure and karpov is arguing well if i get a symmetrical structure i'm going to be a slightly better because it's my turn so in a symmetrical stru structure, usually whoever's first playing a first move in the same way you have a symmetrical structure in this position, normally you're going to be better in that symmetrical structure. But this is the starting chess position, of course. So d5, c takes d5, knight c3, consoles, and knight e5. Uh, black played e6. Um, many people would think that, well, knight c6 tried to challenge this. But black was worried about knight takes e6, b takes e6, and something like knight e4, knight c5, or maybe bishop d2, rook c1, sorry rook c1 and trying to put some pressure on the c6 pawn so knight e5 e6 was played now black is going to challenge the knight sorry in another way with knight fd7 consoles happen knight fd7 f4 what is supporting this knight on e5 now that knight is pretty this is what we call an kind of an outpost uh there's this pawn that could kick that knight in the future but it won't happen because it, that would create a little bit too many weaknesses and knight c6 and you're going to say david you just said that knight c6 is a mistake. Why, why is it not a mistake anymore? Well, this is the problem with chess, or this is the, the not a problem, but the difficult thing about chess. So, not just because one move was bad before, it's going to be bad forever. You shouldn't always just um, throw that to the, the, the idea to, to the bin and think, okay, that's, not, that's impossible. No, you shouldn't do that. What happens now is that with only one little difference or one small move, this position is no longer bad. After knight takes e6, b takes e6, c6 is no longer such a big weakness. In fact, it's not a weakness at all. You can't play knight a4 and knight c5 as quickly because there's a knight guarding that square. And, sorry, oh my goodness. And you you can't play something like bishop e3, c, rook c1 too quickly because c5 is coming. So, all of a sudden, that's not a worry for black anymore. So, white decides to play bishop e3, natural move, developing your pieces. Knight b6, getting to knight c4 in the future maybe. And bishop f2. Maybe you've, some of you were worried, why would Karpov put the bishop in front of a pawn? Well, everything has, has a logical sequence, and if you if you see two moves ahead, you're going to note that, well, the pawn is actually going to move forward anyway, just that the bishop is stronger on, on the f2 square. Bishop d7, e4, 97, and in this position I want to talk about advantages. So when you're a beginner, you think, oh, I have an extra piece, I have an extra pawn, um, I have the advantage, I'm winning. So you, you, you get to a queen, queen and king endgame against your opponent and you checkmate your opponent. You're like, yes, I had an advantage and I proved that I had an advantage. But when you get to this level, to this elite chess players, they don't see chess like that anymore. Their advantages, their equivalent of a, an extra pawn or an extra piece is what we call long-term advantages. So in this case, white plays knight takes d7, queen takes d7 and e5. And what I'm referring to is that now white is claiming that they have an advantage in space. Not only space, but they have an advantage in bishop pair. And these kinds of advantages, when you do little, all of those little advantages, if you sum them up, then you can get a win. That's how chess is played in the elite. Um, black played knight rook c8, rook a c8, I should say, sorry. Rook c1, natural moves. A6, developing, sorry, trying to develop this knight to c6, because if not, then maybe knight b5 becomes annoying and knight d6. So, a6, preventing, so prophylaxis from Katakamsky, but you won't get too, too much prophylaxis from Katakamsky. b3, this is where all the all the master and managing and, and Karpov prevention 
of, of your counter your opponent's counterplay starts. So this is where pretty much the title of the video comes from, Prophylaxis. B3, just saying, well, your knight cannot go to any of these squares anymore. Yeah, you're 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 getting a little bit squeezed. Like you, I don't want you to play. Um, Prophylaxis, I'm preventing what you want to play. Rook c7, queen d2, rook c8. Now black is playing in the queen side. So very important to note that usually the center tells you where you should you should play. So for instance, in this d4 e5 center we have here, it indicates you're playing in the king side. But black has a pawn center or a structure pointing to the queen side. So normally it's not always the case, but normally this is how you know where you should you should you should concentrate your your troops. Um, so that's what black is playing, and it's true. Black's main counterplay is based in the queen side. So rook c7, rook c8. Black is getting all these pieces in the queen side, and white starts already thinking, well, I have to get my my stuff going on on the king side. Now. Bishop f8, as I said, all these pieces are pointing towards the queen side. And this is once again very, very good move, prophylactic move from Karpov, doing what he, he does best. Queen e3. You see, Karpov was worried about bishop b4. And you're gonna say, David, that's illegal. There's a knight on the way. You can't play bishop b4 because there's a knight on the way. Well, Karpov was a master at avoiding what you wanted to do even before you wanted to do it. So even before you knew you could do it. So queen e3. Just preventing that in the future, it might not be a, a, a possibility, but it, you just delete that. There's not, not even a possibility of doing it anymore. So queen e3, uh, avoiding that, knight c6, and f5. Now, bishop b4 is not such a big problem, because it's not pinning, or it's not as annoying as before. Bishop a3, you can argue that this is a little bit of proper axis because you move the rook, but of course this, this is a little bit more basic. And knight b4, and you're going to say, David, white's kingside attack is not going anywhere. And black's already arrived. Look at this. Look at all these pieces in the queen side. And the double rook stack here in the C file. My knight is attacked. Oh, sorry. My knight is attacked. But that's why you need concrete chess and tactics. Because in this position, if you didn't, if you were not tactically aware, you wouldn't find queen h6, which is prophylaxis. You're da David, this is not prophylaxis. This is kingside attack. I mean, it is a good move, David, but it's not prophylaxis. Yes, it is. It is prophylaxis. Because after queen e8, there's not much to be done. If you take this, of course, many of you would play that. Um, thinking, Not thinking about prophylaxis, right? Um, f6. You didn't find your opponent's resources. You didn't think of your opponent's moves. So you couldn't avoid, you couldn't prevent them. You failed to be prophylactic. f6, you're getting checkmated. So, uh, queen e8. Now f6 would, would lead to a worse position for white because after queen f8 you either exchange queens or move the queen back and you lose a knight. So you don't want to exchange queens, you're attacking. And now the reason why this is prophylaxis is because knight b1 happens. Once again, another very, very tactically and very concrete idea. It's attacking the bishop, so the bishop has to move. And now prophylaxis. So this is a sequence of, of moves that prevent black from getting what he wants. What does wa black want? Wants black wants, sorry, black wants to invade. So rook c2 is a big threat. So queen d2, this is a fork, attacking the knight and attacking the bishop. So knight c2 has to be played. If you played something like a5, then there's this four sequence where you have to sacrifice a piece as black and it gets very crazy. So black plays knight c2 and now all of this, all these pieces are all, all of like frozen. You can't move the knight because it's pinned because of the bishop. Like, the, there's a bishop behind. And the knight is not very... You, you don't want a knight on c2, you want the rook on c2. So, king h1 was played by, by white. Keeping all that king side attack, white wants to move this bishop away. So this rook is nice and and, and ready to, to invade in the f-file. Queen e7 was played. Bishop g1, as announced. And knight d7. So... In this part of the game, black is trying to argue that b6, a5, and knight b4 at some point is going to somehow untangle these pieces on c2 and b2. Rook f3, continuing with the kingside attack. So Karpov is saying, okay, I've stopped my, the, my opponent's counterplay. I can get going with my plan now. There's nothing to be worried about. Queen b4. Now, black is doing something. Black is creating this positional threat of exchanging queens. And when you have the advantage, you don't want to exchange queens. So Karpov declines, queen h6. Now rook h3 is a big problem, of course. So black plays queen f8. Queen g5, threatening fe. So black has to move the queen again, queen g7. And once again, very brilliant move, queen d2. 
that I, I it, it seems like every time white plays queen d2 this is a brilliant move but it i mean it might be coincidence it is a brilliant move it, it's brilliant understanding white wants again so what black wants if you fall asleep as white let's say you you stack on their file or you play h4 then knight b4 rook c2 is coming you start worrying about this but queen d2 just prophylaxis don't do that black you can't do that you you won't do that you i, I will I am preventing you from doing that. So black counterplay is constantly stopped. And in the meantime, while is white is getting some moves in the king side. So b6, there's not much to be done. This is this is forcing black to do something slow. Rook f1, doubling, a5, h4, knight b4, finally. I told you this is a this is this is what black wanted. Then you're gonna say, David, what? <laughs> Did they blunder this? No, of course not. Because rook c2. So Gatakamski is a very strong player. Of course, you have to be aware of these things. Um, but what happens now is that after a3, forcing the knight back, rook c2 happens. So you can argue, David, at the end, black did get the, the counterplay they wanted. Yes. But first of all, it was very slow. It, w it wasn't as slow. It, it looked like it was arriving already, like 10 moves ago. But now finally black gets that. But it's already kind of late. Because queen f4, knight c6, forcing these rooks to be disconnected, first of all. Um... And, and what happens is that bishop h3, getting the king's head attack go going, knight, knight d8, connecting the rooks again. And what happens now, this is what I was trying to say, is that after bishop e3, prophylaxis against rook c1 stuff, we analyze this or we evaluate this position. So white has more advantage because of the space. And the only thing black has is the c-file, so queenside counterplay. Note or or look at what, what, what white will play. So... Bishop e3 is the start of a plan, and it's not towards the king's side. b5 was played by black, rook f2. What white is saying is, black has the c-file, I don't want black to have the c-file. That's annoying. I'm going to get rid of the c-file. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exchange all the pieces in the c-file. b4 was played, a takes b4, a takes b4, rook takes e2, rook takes e2, rook f2. And you're going to say, David, you said that when you have an advantage, you shouldn't trade pieces. Well, now it's very concrete because it's not only trading pieces, it's attacking this bishop on b2. And second of all, once you get the control of the c-file, for instance, after this, what happened in the game, bishop a3, this bishop is horrible, it's not doing anything. You will, you're just saving this bishop, but that bishop is doing nothing. You play queen c2, and a couple of moves ago, do you remember, black has the c-file. Now black doesn't have the c-file anymore. So black has the king's side to worry about the king's side attack and this e file now, which is which is brilliant understanding from Karpov. In this position, knight takes e five was played. What happens now is that strong players don't want to roll up and die and just give up and and and, and play passively and try to resist. Normally, what strong players do is when I'm in a worse position, let's make things complicated in hopes to 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 make to make my opponent nervous and maybe some blunder happens. Um, it increases the chances of, of Karpov making a blunder in this case. But Karpov, as usual, very every player in chess who's strong is tactically aware. So there comes a time where your understanding of chess has to be complemented with tactics. So knight takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes e5. You gave up a knight for two pawns, which is not ideal. But what you're getting in exchange from black's perspective is you're, you're opening up uh, lines against this king, so maybe queen e4 check in the future. You're attacking this bishop. It gets a little bit scary. All your pawns are like this from white's perspective, so it's definitely not um, very safe for your king, let's say. But what happens now is that Karpov, as I said, tactically aware, plays queen c8, pinning this knight. If you take this, now this is forced mate after queen takes, f6 and king h6, queen f8. So, queen e4 is not good. Sorry, queen e4, sorry. Bit, queen takes e3 is not good. Queen e4 was played, check. And attacking the knight but Karpov said bishop g2 david they're gonna take the knight with check yeah but after king h2 there's no way black can give another check first of all and second of all there's no way black can defend this black played bishop e2 finally getting that bishop into the game but queen takes d8 king g7 white thinks okay strategy what is my strategy here i want to trade pieces that's what that's what i want to do and then white plays or white says what's my tactics how to do that so strategy is what to do tactics is how to do it so strategy we want to trade these pieces tactics let's play f6 david why is this working bishop takes f6 you just gave up upon well white is saying bishop h6 king takes h6 queen takes f6 we traded pieces which is what we wanted to do the king is now a little bit unsafe 
And when, when I say a little bit, I mean a lot. And now white is winning because white is closer. When, when you're winning, you should trade pieces because it's you're, you're getting closer to winning. It's easier and you get rid of all this chaos that black is trying to get. In this position, queen c2 was played, pinning the knight, the, sorry, the, the bishop. There's not much to be done as black. You're just trying to pose as many practical problems as usual, as, as sorry, as, as possible. g5 check was played, king h5. And one last brilliant move by white. So many of you would relax, would say, ah, I'm winning, I have an extra bishop, my opponent's king is in, in h5, it's going to get checkmated soon. And you would play something like king h3. By the way, you have two options. You can play king g3 or king h3. And you think, ah, it's the same. King h3. I'm preparing bishop f3. My opponent is going to resign soon. And then your opponent plays queen f5. And you scratch your head and you think, oh my goodness. Did I just blunder this? And you think, ah, oh, chess is so unfair. Shalala, shalala. And, you, and you probably go, will lose this game. Or uh, at least you're not winning. Because what happens now is that if you trade bishop f3, king g6, it's not checkmate anymore. And you have a thousand pawns to deal with. Right? So... All of a sudden, if you stop being prophylactic, you just lose the game. And that's chess for you. It's cruel. It's very tough. But that's that's life as well. I mean, if you stop, if you relax, if you think, oh, I've done it. Finally, and you relax for a second. It's only one move you have to blunder to to blunder the whole game. So you went from a masterpiece to blundering the whole game. Um, what happens now is that King G3 is the winning move. King H3, of course, loses to Queen F5. Or, or at least not doesn't win. So king g3 has to be played. And queen f5 is no longer checked. So you can play bishop f3. That's why black tried a last trick. Or a last uh, check I should say. Queen c7. And now king h3 is played. Bishop f3 is unstoppable. You can try queen c3. But bishop f3 is going to stop your own check. And check your opponent's king. At the same time. And this is going to be checkmate after this and that. So after queen c7. King h3. Karpov won the game. Gatakamski resigned. It was an amazing prophylactic game. I'm assuming that Karpov got some sort of prize or something. Uh, it's it's amazing. And it teaches you how to to to, to think of this kind of um, uh, thought in chess. So um, think about this kind of thought. So it teaches you that you have to, to be aware of your opponent's resources. There's no other way. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And as always, have a nice day.